You got to tune to Wop Up on KXP 90.3 FM, live on the web at kxp.org. I'm Derek Mazzoni, your DJ and host, and it is a great honor to have Miklit Hadero in town tonight. Yes, thanks indeed. For, thanks for being here. Thanks for having us. We'd love to hear a song, please. Right on. This tune is called Slow.
make late hadero, you're done. Okay. I've I've interrupted so many times. And it's always it's always scary. Um so uh the, it's the title track of uh, of the brand new record on Six Degrees. Yeah, we are live. Tell me about that song. That song is um, a mix of two. It was based on this mix of two different five count rhythms. I co-founded a project about the music of the Nile River. And about a year and a half ago, I was on a residency with musicians from all up and down the river. Mm -hmm. And I was hanging out with this uh, Sudanese instrumentalist called Ahmed Saeed. And he taught me this rhythm. And uh, it's called the Camel Walk. And it has this very specific dance that goes along with it. And it became embodied in me in a way. You know, that's what happens when you learn a dance that goes with a rhythm. It gets in your toes. And uh, yeah, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And when I got home, I was really into this Radiohead 5 count. Um, that a percussionist taught me and uh, together they ended up making We Are Alive and that's it's the simple idea you know as hard as it gets and as sweet as it gets we mm -hmm. are alive that's perfect um, how did you hook up with Six Degrees Records? well we're there they're our hometown buddies you know they're they're not too far from where I live and, and where we all hang out and um, they're an amazing label they also have this kind of sensibility of the in between the not easily defined mm -hmm. um and I, and I always loved their uh sort of byline which is everything's closer than you think and I love that idea and that sentiment is really built into that label so yeah it just started slowly you know they would come to the shows and hang out and we have so many mutual friends and yeah. suddenly we knew we wanted to work together that's perfect can you introduce the band Mickley please Oh, yes. On the trumpet, we have Mr. Darren Johnston, who is um, a dear friend of mine. We've been playing together for a little more than six years. Um, everybody in this band is a composer mm -hmm. and a band leader in their own right and um, really amazing musicians. Uh, on the drum kit, we have Mr. Lorca Hart, who is <laughs> kind of, <laughs> he's, he's my, Lorca Hart, my, my father, we, we, were in, uh, we were in Florida playing um, at the at the Ringling International Arts Museum, and, and my dad gave Lorca an Ethiopian name, which is Lorkinut, so he's both Lorca Hart and Lorkinut Hart. <laughs> and on the bass, as well as the keys, um, both upright and electric bass, we have Sam Bevan, um, who is also just an unbelievable musician, and, and, and the band really did a lot for the arrangements uh, on the songs as well, and, and we worked intensively to create this record together. Perfect. We'd love to hear some more music, please. Right on. Uh, we do a cover of the police tune called Bring On The Night, and here it is. Right on. Bring on the night I couldn't stand another daylight Bring on the night I couldn't stand it I couldn't
live on the air on Wopop and KEXP. Uh, can you tell me how you got into music? Like, what took you from fan to performer? <laughs> well, I was always a secret performer, as performers are, right? Um, I wanted to be a singer, but I didn't know what it meant. You know, when I was a kid, I saw either, like, the path of a very academic approach to music or one that was seemingly about a cult of fame and and I wasn't really interested in either one of those not, but I didn't know what another way was so when I got to San Francisco I was 24 years old and got swept up in this world around the Red Poppy Art House which is this tiny little interdisciplinary arts and culture space that I eventually became the co-director of and met musicians from all over the world from all different artistic disciplines who were creating work that seemed to resonate with the world around them and mm -hmm. not be about a bubble but be about a relationship and asking questions and and after that I was like oh this is what I can do I, I saw how it was possible and after that it all happened very very quickly but you studied um, I got this off of uh, Wikipedia so it could be wrong <laughs> um, and often is you studied political science I did I have a degree in political science and you got involved in the the TED policy quote-unquote and and continued to, you were part of an Ethiopian-based collective and continuously collaborate. Now in San Francisco, there's a ton of people out there that can feed that. Um, do you continue to, you plan to stay there or are you going to go on the road and see where that takes you? You know, we, we travel quite a lot as a band um, and I, you, I love San Francisco very dearly, but I, I also feel that it's um, important to be out in the world um, bumping your ideas up against ones that are quite different from yours. So I find that touring is is really satisfies my need for exploration and for um, expansion. Uh, additionally, you know, I'm continuing to work with the Nile Project, and mm -hmm. that also has its own touring, and and is is quite a it has a just an incredible base of musicians um, who are in the collective and whom there's a very collaborative and co-learning uh, relationship w between us. And, and so I, I find that through my music, um, I'm able to satisfy the need for expansion and then I can be on my hilltop in the bay right on. <laughs> to touch down from time to time. Perfect. Thank you. More music, please. Right on. This song is called Far Away. Just a bit before our eyes caught the scene inside A brief light of all the story Lying upon the wall like water dripping as the storm It passed a second, it's not enough to see through oh, And you want to know what happened just a bit before Oh, our eyes caught 
the scene inside a light of other store or relying upon the wall like water dripping as the storm it takes a second's not enough to see through the window Gorgeous. It's the first time I heard a trumpet inhaled. <laughs> that was great. It's very important to keep the trumpet clean. I bet. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> uh, you got to tune to Wop Up on KEXP 90.3 FM, live on the web at kxp.org. Here with, uh, it, do you want your full name or just McLeet? What's, what's easier for McLeet, you? McLeet, McLeet, yeah. Okay. And you spent some time in Seattle? Yes, I did. How long? I lived here for just under two years, okay. right when I graduated from college. What was that like for you? You know, it was really interesting. I, when I was in high school, a lot of my family moved from Ethiopia to Seattle. And when I graduated from college, I realized that it was actually my opportunity to get to know them for the first time in a really, um, you know, close way. So I rolled on out, drove my car across the country, and I was here for two years. And, and in a lot of ways, I was immersed in a very Ethiopian world in Seattle. Um, and my mom lives here and my aunties and my uncle and, you know, more cousins than I can count. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But, but after two years, you know, it was just a little bit rainy for me. I needed a little bit more vitamin D in my diet. <laughs> we get that a lot. Um, when, how long, um, how old were you when you moved from Ethiopia to the States? We were, I was just under two years old. Okay. When we so moved. you were. So, and you spoke Ethiopian at home, or? Um, we spoke, well, my parents spoke Amharic, and, and my sister and I both spoke Amharic until we went to school. You okay. know, we were living in Iowa at the time when we first moved here, which is pretty crazy. You know, um, there was a, a few other Ethiopians who were mostly students, some at the University of Iowa. Um, so, but as soon as we went to school, and as soon as you're, you know, it takes a, it takes a whole community to learn a language mm -hmm. and to retain a language. So once we were in first grade, um, we lost the language. And you know, I've learned a lot as an adult. I'm not fluent, but I do love to sing in Amharic. Beautiful. We'd love to hear some more. Right on. This song is called Kemekem, and Kemekem is uh, a word in Amharic that means uh, freshly mown grass. But it's like a, a slang term for the perfect, perfect, afro. And this song can be loosely translated as, I like your afro. This is Kim again. Come back, 
Live in the studios, KEXP 90.3. Uh, my dear, you and your ensemble are very, very talented. Well, thank you very much. We do have our fun. You do. <laughs> you do. It's so wonderful to hear. Please um, come back. That would be great. We'll see you next time. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. You got to tune to Wopop, KEXP 90.3 FM, live on the web at kxp.org. Keep it tuned. <laughs> 